I'm going to go straight over to Andy Burton, who's the um, operations director for Alicia Training. Um, we're going to be hearing about work-life balance, I hope, yeah. <laughs> um, and how staff can deploy these services and actually physically make, make a difference to their, their actual lives. So no further ado, over to Andy. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, I've never good start with an apology, but I will. I'm suffering from man flu, you ladies will understand. Um, so I may have to stop occasionally and have a wee bit of a cough. Um, but it's, we're delighted to be here, and I'd like to extend my thanks to all of the organisers here and to the speakers that have gone before, um, because in a way they've, they've helped uh, do a little bit of my sort of work for me. Um, as I say, I'm Andy Burton, um, Ops Director from um, Alicia. And what I really want to try and look at today in a relatively short period of time, I think I've got about 35 minutes, is um, some of these ideas about working smart. Um, there is no doubt that the technology that we've seen here today and the technology that we're going to see in the future is fantastic. It is liberating. It is enabling. It will empower people to do things in places that they never thought they could do them before. Um, but there is also the people factor, and I was very pleased to hear from the other presenters um, that they talked about people, they talked about culture. Richard was very clear about one of the things that he looks for and everything is people. So at the centre of all this, there's people. And of everything, they're probably the most complex component. So we'll have a look at that as we go through today. I'd just like to uh, thank people who aren't here today, uh, who I have... Um, liberally borrowed material and evidence from in sort of looking at the sort of things we look here and there up there. Just a little bit of a scene setter really. Um, we've talked about small and medium enterprises. We've, we've heard about the growth. We heard that in 2014 um, there's uh, something like 28 million people are going to be working in some, some way out of what we would consider to be the traditional office. We know that it's supported and sustained um, legally, and people have a right to ask for it, but it also brings with it massive benefits to organisations when it can be done well. And research clearly shows that people are more productive, people, there's less absenteeism, people are generally happier when they're given a de greater degree of freedom, and it's the technology that helps to liberate that. And we've seen that it does introduce flexibility and agility. And certainly in the current circumstances, agility and the ability to change and to adapt to markets rapidly is going to be one of the key factors. And not only, as we talked about, it's not just the cost of building a new building. How long does it take to build a new building? How long does it take to reconfigure your working space? Not just the cost. Technology, I think, brings with it the ability to do it very rapidly. And I think that's another big thing to be considered. The experience we'd like to sort of share to you, with you today um, is around this really. We work with a large number of clients, some large, some small, but without a doubt they have all gone through a period of organisational transformation and or change. Transformation obviously being more dramatic, but certainly change. We've seen the fact that they've had to adapt and adopt and change the way that they do their business and they've had to look at their costs very carefully. They've been reducing estate. They've been moving people around. Yes, they have been reducing the number of people that work for them as well. And they've looked at ways to work more flexibly in order to drive down cost, whilst also trying to gain competitive advantage by doing things better and smarter and delighting the customers more. We find that ourselves as a business. Uh, we're a business with a business model that really does support this idea of people working from disparate locations all contributing towards uh, the success of the business and supporting our clients. We have 45 office-based staff, but without a doubt, all of those are unable to access information remotely. So again, we're living what we're talking about today, and we're extremely interested in the technology that's been, been talked about as well. And we have over 300 associates across um, the, the whole of the UK delivering uh, services for us, and we need to be able to collaborate effectively with, the, with them. Myself, yes, I'm an IT background person, I'm a bit geeky, I come from a, a, an IT projects background, um, but one of the things I certainly learned throughout all of those was that you ignore the people issues at your peril. Um, and so that's one of the things I'd like to uh, talk about today. The knowledge that we've gained is that working offside is not for everybody. You need to think about these carefully. The key to success is shared values and cultures, and we heard that again mentioned today. And that the organisations that succeed the best are those that can align the benefits of technology to what they do and to align themselves to the benefits of technology. So you need to be thinking about those. You've got to invest in your people. You've got to understand what your people are capable of. And you've got to be able to manage that appropriately. 
and the people that manage your people. Similarly, they need time and effort investing in them because it is a different way of working. Being a good manager, being a good leader works in any situation. You just need to do more of it and sometimes you have to do it slightly differently. And you need to learn those skills. And if you haven't got them already, you need them. And then when you need them to manage people remotely, you need them more. And that's really what we find. Now I want you to do a bit of work because we gave you a chocolate. You can have the chocolate if you haven't had it already, if you respond to this. Who would agree with that statement? Red tomatoes, green tomatoes. Show your hands if you like. Who agrees? Who agrees? Who doesn't agree? OK, excellent. We've got a divergence of opinion. Now, I wonder if that's an XY split. I didn't quite do that, but it could have been. How about this one? Who agrees with that statement? Who disagrees with that statement? Nobody disagrees with that statement. That's interesting. Please. You don't agree with it? Oh, OK. Probably because it doesn't say things like legal or moral or things like that in it. That's great. Thank you for making my point. This is only sustainable. You all thought that was great. Only sustainable if you have a recognized, shared, and valued culture that everyone signs up to and that lives the values of your organization. OK? Probably won't all agree with that, but we can take some of that at questions. So. What we tend to find is that organisations that can manage both of those statements and realise both of those statements, and the broad majority of you agreed that they were, they were reasonable statements, have this high trust culture. They have people that want to strive. They allow people to collaborate and they actively collaborate at every level. They give a high degree of individual freedom to people. They disaggregate authority. They don't abdicate it, they disaggregate it. Big difference there. And they focus on outcome rather than effort. And this idea of being seen to be there doesn't necessarily mean you're being productive. So this presentism, which I think is a mid-Atlantic psychobabble word, over productivity. Okay? But there is a warning as well. People can be less productive when you can't see them, just as much as they can be more productive when you can. Other things we've learned from the organisation we've worked with who have gone through these transformations, or are going through them, are Communicate, communicate, communicate. Full engagement with staff at all levels. As I said right at the beginning, this is not always right for everybody at the right time. You have to work on these things. You have to empower and enable people. You have to make them understand that they are part of this change and that this change is important to them as well as important to the business. And the business does well and they do well. You're already talking about the investment in technology. It's, it's there. The technology is staring us in the face. And if we ignore it, then I'm afraid someone else is just going to take, over, take us over. One of the ideas that we'll look at today is this idea of objective setting. If you're going to focus on outcome, people need to understand what that outcome is. And you have to set objectives clearly. You have to manage them, you have to monitor them, you have to agree them. And we'll have a look at some techniques around that. And you've got to continue to build highly cohesive teams. And that is, can be a real challenge when people are geographically or, or, or time-spaced. It's not always as easy to form that cohesive team and manage that team when you don't meet physically on a regular basis. We are basically a social or tribal animal. And so we've got to think about those sort of things. How do we manage to do those? What I want to have a look at is some of these ideas from an organisational level, some of them from an individual level, and then some of them as managers. And I'm just going to invest a little bit of time in a couple of models that we've used with some success to help sort of put that into context. Um, I've provided you with one model on your table. Oh, sorry, in table. There's me going back to teacher mode there. On your seat, which is the five-minute manager on 7S framework. Nothing new in this, no rocket science in this. Developed by McKinsey's, broadly used, um, and I think it's a very effective tool. Um, the other tools that I'm going to talk about today, there will be similar five-minute managers on these available on our website after the conference. But I'm giving you this one because there's some stuff in there you might want to refer to as we go through. Okay, so the organization itself. What we're really talking about here is how do you get the organization ready? What things should you be considering? 
you're utilizing technology, you're bringing technology in, and it's going to certainly improve the way that you do business. But there are other ways that you can get even more from that technology and the consideration for you to think about. So going back to this, we're talking about this 7S's framework. It's called the 7S framework because there's 7S's. Um, some of them have been sort of squeezed in there um, uh, to sort of fit the, starting with an S, things like shared values. But I'm going to start with shared values. And the reason why I'm going to start with shared values goes back to the statement we were making earlier and the statement that other uh, speakers have made. A lot of this hangs on your culture. A lot of this hangs on your val values. A lot of this hangs on the fact that you're going in the same direction as everyone else within the organization, and they all buy into that. And so if you're going to empower people, if you're going to allow people to work more flexibly so that you can achieve better outcomes, then you need to support and understand what that means for them and what that means for you as an organization. And you need to have the necessary systems, strategy, structure, skills in place in order to achieve that. So I always come at it from a foot. Uh, so are you ready? Is it what you want to do? Is it what everyone wants to do? Clearly, you wouldn't be here if it wasn't. So you've answered that. When we think about the strategy, strategy comes in at all levels. Strategy is often confused with planning, but let's not worry about that for this, for this case. You will have an overall strategy of the direction you want to take your business in. And we've heard examples of that today. Within that, you're going to have strategies around your people, and you're going to have strategies around how you're going to achieve them. One of the things we're talking about today is the strategic use of technology. Leveraging in technology to gain competitive advantage, to free people up to recognize their full potential and contribute to the organization. Why? Because you want to be successful, because you want to live your culture, you want to live, live your values, and you want to make sure you as an organization succeed and outcompete the others. Seems like a good strategy to me. Um, the other thing is your structures. Looking at how you as an organization are, are organized. Who reports to who? When do they report? What do we look like as an organization? How is this technology going to help us do that better? How are we going to shape the way that we manage and structure ourselves? Now we could be talking about the estate, and we've heard quite clearly, I don't need a bigger office. In fact, I can get out of this office and I get in a smaller office. That's a structural estates issue, things to be thinking about. Does my existing structure allow? When I go into the real detail of the people that I'm asking to work remotely or potentially working from home, are they structurally able to do that? Do I have to make some investments in ensuring my health and safety of obligations are met, for example? So there's things like this to be talked about. The systems. There are hard and there are soft systems. The systems I'm talking about here, notwithstanding the technological ones that we've heard about today, are my HR systems, my management systems, my performance systems. Does anything really need to change? When I'm managing someone who I see every day in the office, as opposed to the person that I may only meet in virtual space for a large part of the time? I don't know, question. Maybe there is. We've come around share value. Skills. There's a whole range of skills here, and I'm not going to stray into this, those specific skills around how the technology is used, because that is a crucial part, and you know that. If you're going to give someone a new piece of technology to use, you are clearly going to make the investment in making sure that they can use it adequately and properly. I'm really talking here about the people skills. What does it mean to the people when they have this technology? How will it change the way that they work? How will it change the way their managers manage them? How will it change the team dynamic? These are skills. They're skills that lead to behaviors, and behaviors are what underpins culture. And culture is what we talked about with shared values. There's a style question here. <coughs> oh, God, excuse me. I'm not talking about sartorial here or bra fasteners, or any of those sort of things. I'm talking about the style of your organization, the style of your managers. If you're the sort of manager who likes to be there and managing and having people around you, or if you're the sort of subordinate who likes to be managed in a very close and intimate way, that's fine. You've got to understand, though, that may have implications if you want to put time and distance between that relationship. 